Green Jello is the worst. What? Just a Fitzysaurus Rex. They're small, but savage. What's up YouTube, Billy here. I got a really cool project idea for today. So I was surfing the interwebs and I came across this picture of a pterodactyl. I don't know what type of reptile species it is. It's a pterodactyl, I don't know. But what I was thinking is, can I take this and make it into a wood fossil? So how do I take this and make everything wood, but it's still like a cool fossil? So I took this picture, played with it in Photoshop, played with it in Illustrator, made a vector graphic. It turned out pretty good. Okay, so here's my plan. I'm gonna take a piece of a maple tree that I milled up. I'm going to cut a chunk off of that, mill that thing down, and I'm gonna go over to the CNC and rough cut these shapes out for the fossil bones on the CNC. Now, there's gonna be a ton of handwork in this project, so I'm gonna use the CNC to give me some rough shapes. That way I got something to work with, and then we're gonna inlay all of these bones into a piece of wood, and we're gonna do a lot of shaping by hand, a lot of chisels, a lot of carving. This is gonna be a challenging project. I got my walnut boards all milled up and it's time to glue them together. I'm not gonna use any fasteners or anything like dominoes because really I don't know what shape I wanna make this. Part of me says to keep it square or a rectangle and kind of go with this cool modern look with this. And I think that would look really cool as a balance to the fossil because that's definitely not modern. But another part of me says, what if I cut it into a cool shape like uh, like it looks like a stone or a tablet or something like that. So I'm not sure yet. So I am going to glue all of this together, make a little bit oversized. And I didn't want to put any dominoes inside it because then whenever I do cut it to shape, I could accidentally cut through one of the dominoes and that's just not going to look very good. I usually like to apply clamps to the corners whenever I'm gluing up panels like this because it's really easy whenever you're using pipe clamps for the edges to kind of like turn up a bit whenever you're making these big glue ups. So I will take my clamps and I clamp them from the panel onto the actual bar or the pipe on the clamp. It does a pretty good job. A 
I'm gonna let the glue skim up a bit and before it gets hard, I'll come back with a chisel and clean it up. And then after the glue is dry, I'll run through my drum sander just to clean it all up. This should be a really good platform for the fossil. So speaking of the fossil, I finished cutting that out on the CNC. Here we go. Here's all the parts to this dinosaur. Now I didn't route all the way through. There's just too many little delicate parts and I was worried about them breaking or flying out or whatever. So instead I routed a good ways through the board and now I'm gonna take it over to the bandsaw and I'm going to resaw the board. And as I do, my pieces should fall out. New day in the shop and I spent some time last night trying to rearrange the pieces of the fossil to get it kind of how I think I want it whenever I put it actually on the walnut board. So I think I'm there. Now it's time to start doing the inlay. I'm drawing a square of where I kind of want my fossil to be at on the walnut board. I know my fossil is going to be around 20 inches square or so. So I'm going to draw that out here on the board and then I can see all the overhang that I'm going to have and then it helps me visualize what do I want to do whenever I cut the outside shape out? Do I want to just keep it a square or do I want to cut something more natural looking? I don't know. We'll see. All right, I think I'm ready to start doing the inlay and I'm going to start with the beak first, the head of the dinosaur, because it just looks like that's the biggest piece and it might be the most difficult one. So I like to get that established. Now to do this, I got a bunch of different tools here that might help me out. I grabbed some of my smaller chisels. I have a couple marking knives here, uh, an X-Acto knife, and then I also grabbed my chip carving knives that I used. Um, it's been a while since I've used these, but they're really great. I like the way the, the handle is shaped there. So I thought these might come in handy for some of the smaller bones like the rib bones or the toes, um, just to try to get in there and carve a little tiny V groove or something that I can shove the inlay into. And to help mark things out, I'm gonna use some double-sided tape. So I'll take the double-sided tape, stick it to my piece, stick it onto the walnut board here, and then I can take my knife and I can trace it all out, take it off, carve out what I want to, then inlay the wood in there. Now what I'm gonna do, or not gonna do, is I don't want to inlay this entire piece in here. I made these about three-eighths of an inch thick, and I kinda want the look of the bones are coming out of the ground. So some of the areas I might inlay deeper, or I might have them raised up higher, or I might sand away some of these so they don't look so perfect. But I want it to look like the fossil's coming out of the wood, not that the fossil is glued onto the wood. There's my center line. So I'm thinking I'll put the head about right there. That looks pretty good. For some of these really tiny areas here, I don't think I'm going to try to carve out all the area around it and leave that little nub up because I think those things are going to break off whenever I put the inlay in there. So instead, I will probably leave those empty or come back with walnut later on and add the walnut and basically fill them instead of inlaying it. I think I would end up getting the same effect without breaking these things off. I've been working on the skull area and I can say that it's definitely not my finest work when it comes to inlay. This one's really tricky. If you look at the skull here, there's a lot of these areas that have to be cut out and they are super tiny. So what I did was I used some chisels to clean up the outside area and to reduce a lot of the, the depth. Then I went with my Dremel and I have this nifty little base here for it that I don't use all that often, but it's a handy little tool to have and then use the Dremel to clear away most of the middle part of it and just to make sure that the base was all nice and flush. So now I'm going to glue the skull in the place and just keep working on the rest of the bones. Bye. Uh -huh. 
that was a ton of work, but it turned out pretty good so far. I probably spent 20 hours or so doing the inlay alone with this. So a lot of time went into it and a lot of tools. I used multiple size chisels. I used chip carving knives, razor blades. Uh, I used a Dremel. I used a handheld router. So a lot of different things to try to get all these pieces in here. The bigger pieces weren't that bad. It was really all those small bones, especially if they had curves, made it really tough. But I got there. I'm fairly happy with it. I also don't have a ton of inlay experience. And to me, if you want to challenge yourself, you want to build up your skill set, don't do the same thing over and over again. Give yourself a project. And I'm not even a big fan of test projects. I like to just jump in. If I want to learn how to do inlay, might as well inlay something super complex because that's the best way for me to learn. Now, next step, I want to do a little bit of sanding and tailoring these bones a bit. I don't want them to all feel like they were just glued on because they weren't, they were inlaid. But I also want the bones to kind of feel like some of them are still inside uh, the ground. Some of them are poking up a little bit higher. So I think I'm gonna hit it with some sandpaper some chisels, carve away different areas, um, have some areas that are higher relief, lower relief, uh, and just try to give it some, some character. And then after that, I do some sanding, then I'm gonna figure out my profile to cut it out. I don't know, let's see what happens. All right, so it's time to cut out the outside of this. And uh, I want something that looks fairly natural. Um, so I'm just gonna take some chalk and kind of draw a couple lines here. I don't wanna follow the exact shape of the dinosaur. So maybe something like that. Now I'm gonna go over to the bandsaw, cut this out. Finished up over the bandsaw, and I think it looks pretty cool. It looks like a stone slab to me. Then I hit it with the random orbit sander, and I went around the edges, softened them. Some areas I dipped down a bit. I did leave the bandsaw marks in a lot of areas because it started to look kind of like, uh, like a sandstone, which I really dug that look. So now here's where my OCD really kicks in. Projects don't leave my shop unless they're properly sanded. That's just part of making. And I've sanded this to 120, but I don't think I need to sand it higher than that. I think that would take away from what I'm, what I'm trying to do. Bones, the, the, the slab itself is gonna have some sort of texture. So instead of sanding it higher than 120, I'm gonna take some wire brushes and I'm gonna start scuffing it and hitting certain areas with wire brushes to give it some texture. Let's hope that works out.
finally the moment I've been waiting for, which is applying finish to this thing. I don't want anything that's shiny. So uh, I'm gonna go with some Osmo oil, hard wax finish. Should give it a nice matte sheen. It's gonna look good. If you've never applied Osmo oil, it's really easy to do. I will use a white scotch Bright pad and I will buff it into the grain. A little goes a long way. You don't need a lot of this stuff. And you don't want to have any of it left over on the surface. So after I apply it, I'll either go back with another pad or like a paper towel, wipe all the extra off, and then I'll make sure that I buff it because again, you don't want to have anything left over. About eight hours later, you're good to go. And you can apply as many coats as you want. This walnut is looking absolutely gorgeous. What is it about dinosaurs that people just love? It's crazy how many people love dinosaurs. I think every little boy at least goes to a dinosaur phase where you just absolutely love them. And I gotta say, isn't the pterodactyl on everyone's list at some point? It may not be your favorite, but it, it, it's up there. I don't, I don't think too many people are like, I absolutely hate the pterodactyl. This is the point where somebody makes a comment saying that they hate the pterodactyl. Don't make me block you. I'm thinking my favorite dinosaur is probably the Triceratops. I've always thought the Triceratops was awesome. I mean, there's a couple of them that are really up there. The Triceratops might be my favorite. Let me know in the comments below, let me know which is your favorite dinosaur. It's okay to like the T-Rex. I know that's kind of basic. Everyone likes the T-Rex. It's okay though. You can like the T-Rex. T-Rex is cool. It's a little tough trying to get in all these nooks and crannies. I might have to get a brush. This would have been a great project for spraying, but as I said uh, a couple of projects ago, last project, project before that, a recent project, it is snowing here because it's Michigan. So spraying is not gonna work for me. I can't spray outside and I don't like to spray in the house. So hand finishes only during the wintertime. I should really look up what type of dinosaurs are common in my area. I do know that mammoths are super common. They find mammoth bones, mammoth teeth all the time around here. Not a dinosaur, but still cool. Osmo is one of those finishes that you could really spend a lot of time uh, applying the coat. So I don't like to wait until I'm all done before I wipe off the extra. I'll do it periodically, just so I don't have any dry. There were a couple larger areas that I was gonna come back in and do a, uh, a refill. Like right here in the, the head, there are a couple of large gaps. And the plan was, as I said earlier, I was gonna inlay the skull, then come back with uh, a couple pieces of walnut and inlay those inside. That would have been a little bit easier than trying to cut around every one of these tiny shapes. But I was looking at pictures online and uh, what I noticed is on a lot of actual fossils, there are just areas that are cut out away from the fossil, certain gaps here and there as the archeologists were digging around the bones. And I thought it'd be kind of cool to have those in there. So some of these I trimmed away a little wider on purpose because I thought that would look cool. Some of them I left completely open and then some of them I closed in. Uh, just trying to give it that really cool effect. Based on my track record when it comes to receiving comments, somebody is gonna get really ornery and tell me that this dinosaur is not really a dinosaur or it came from whatever period. It doesn't matter. It's a dinosaur. I know it's a dinosaur. You know it's a dinosaur. It's a dinosaur.
this was an incredibly difficult project to try to get done in a short amount of time. It was a lot of work, but I think it was worth it. I think it turned out really cool. I'm really digging it. I love the maple and how it pops from the walnut. I like the shape of the walnut, so it looks like a slab or stone or something. It was so cool, I'm glad I did it. And I think that I learned quite a bit about inlay and I look forward to putting those inlay skills to the test in some future projects. So now I'm starting to brainstorm some other ideas. So if you like this video, then please consider subscribing to the channel, give this video a thumbs up and hit the bell notification so you know the next time I upload videos. I usually upload them once a week, sometimes even more than that. So you wanna hit the bell so you're notified when my next one goes live. And until we meet again, get in your shop and build something awesome.